what's going on people religion we must say has been both a blessing and a curse to africa the population of the african continent today boasts of predominantly the christian Muslim and several traditional faiths. While religion has been the major influence on art, culture and philosophy, it has also been used by some as a tool for manipulation, deception, and commerce. In the year 2000, in Kanungu, Uganda, the ugly face of religion showed itself to the astonishment of the world. This is a story of occultism, death and fake prophecies there are so many so many other children like here now you right? what's going on people this is Kali Obasa of this kaliobasa.com did you forget Welcome to this episode of Dodo Vibes. Dodo Vibes. Before we get into this story, I ask that you support Dodo Vibes by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification button so you can get new videos as we release them. On March 17, 2000, more than 700 people perished in a fire after they were locked inside a makeshift church in the southwestern village of Kanungu, the headquarters of the Movement for the Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God. A group registered to obey the Ten Commandments and preach the word of Jesus Christ. The movement was founded in the early 1990s by three Catholics led by Joseph Kibwetere an ex-government employee, a disgraced priest Dominic Kataribapo, and a former bartender and sex worker named Cledonia Mwerinde. These three made several wild claims and succeeded in brainwashing their congregation to such an extent that believers lived mostly in silence, occasionally using signs to communicate. According to followers of the movement, they did everything possible to avoid sin. If they sinned, they would be punished by being commanded to recite the rosary a thousand times, with most people asking family and friends to help until the punishment is served. Wow. Frightening people, there was a religion of fear, and see people can confuse fear with faith. <laughs> and they used to call themselves holy, holy people. Hmm? Keeping Ten Commandments, what about the fifth one? Thou shalt not kill. On 14th, all members of that cult who were present paid their taxes, even arias. They even paid any debt they had with anybody and made, made good all mishaps that had happened between them and the local community. Joseph Kibwetere, the charismatic leader of the church, and Cledonia Mwerinde then started telling devotees they had seen visions of the Virgin Mary and openly predicted that the world would come to an end on the 31st of December 1999 and then sometime in 2000 when the former didn't happen. You see, the church leaders made their followers understand that at an exact time in 2000, the Virgin Mary would descend and sweep all the devoted followers into paradise. However, 
as the hours into 2000 started counting down and the apocalypse was not happening, the believers started asking questions. Not much is known about the sequence of events that followed, but it is gathered that at some point, the leaders locked up the followers in the church named the Ark, in reference to Noah's Ark, and set them ablaze. It transpires that the doors and windows were nailed shut from the outside. The date was March 17, 2000. There is no accurate count of the number of victims in this massacre. Some researchers claim it was over a thousand, some 700. The Ugandan police put the number at between 530 and 800 people. By all accounts, the deaths rivaled the Jonestown suicide and massacre which killed 913 People's Temple members in a remote part of the Southern American nation of Guyana. So what happened to the leaders of this Ugandan cult? Well, there is a strong suspicion Mwerinde, Kubitere and other church leaders survived the church conflagration and fled Uganda. Ugandan authorities believe that they left the Kanangu compound in the early hours of March 17. They have been considered fugitives and mass murderers, and in April 2000, police issued an international warrant for their arrests in connection to the killing. Till date, Nobody has seen or heard of the church leaders and anyone involved in the death. So my friends, at what point do you draw the line between accepting the doctrine as portrayed by your pastor or imam and understanding the doctrine yourself. Let's hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the notification button. I am Koli Obasa. Thanks for watching. Until next time, God bless.